Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Welcome to our Mass. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first are Colin and Anne from Antigonish, Nova Scotia. In thanksgiving for gifts received by the family, for peace within families and the world, and for a successful surgery. The second donor is the Trudell family from Ottawa for their intentions. The third is an anonymous donor from Fredericton, New Brunswick for her husband, Donald, who is suffering from Parkinson's, and for his sister, Joanne, who lost her husband on November 25th, 2014, and in loving memory of their deceased parents and son, Stephen. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Let us begin by acknowledging our sins, and so we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Rejoicing in this annual celebration of our Lenten observance, we pray, O Lord, that with our hearts set on the Paschal Mysteries, we may be gladdened by their full effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. The Lord says, when Ephraim and Judah acknowledge their guilt and seek my face, then they shall cry out to me. In their distress, they will beg my favor. Come, let us return to the Lord, for it is he who has torn, and he will heal us. He has struck down, and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up, then we may live before him. Let us now, let us press on to know the Lord, that his appearing is as sure as the dawn. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. Then I shall say to them, what shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets. I have killed them by the words of my mouth, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. The word of the Lord. It is steadfast love, not sacrifice, that God desires. It is steadfast love, not sacrifice, that God desires. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. 
According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. It is steadfast love, not sacrifice, that God desires. For you have no delight in sacrifice, if I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. It is steadfast love. to Zion in your good pleasure. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. It is steadfast love Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. If today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying this way, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. The world that the prophet Hosea lived in was a world where people honored their gods by sacrifices. Some of those sacrifices were food, and some of them were drink. They poured libations 
as offerings. Some of them were animal sacrifices where they killed animals and offered the animal in its blood to God. And some of them were even human sacrifices where they'd kill a human being to honor God. The book of Genesis tells the story of a human sacrifice. God commanded Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac. And Abraham obeyed God and got ready to sacrifice his son, but God sent an angel to stop him. Because what God wanted to do was to teach Abraham what sacrifice was all about. He wanted to teach Abraham that sacrifice was a sign. These sacrifices were signs. What were they signs of? They were signs that people knew God. That is to say that they recognized that God had given them their lives and all their lives belonged to God. And that what God wanted was that life in return, not through being killed, but through love and obedience, living a life pleasing to God in love and obedience. That was what God wanted. Now, he would take as a sign of it an animal sacrifice in those days, but he certainly didn't want human sacrifices. That was unworthy of human beings to do that. So that's what that story was about. But in the time of Hosea, there was another time for teaching because the people forgot again what sacrifices were all about, what they meant, why they had sacrifices. They were the signs of steadfast love and the knowledge of God. They were just signs. The people began to think of them, that's just what you did in religion. That's what God wanted. God wanted sacrifices, and so you gave them. But the sacrifices didn't have anything to do with what was inside them. What they thought, how they loved God, their obedience to God, it had nothing to do with keeping God's commandments. And so the prophet said, no, this is what God says. I want steadfast love and not sacrifice. I want the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. When Jesus came, he said the same thing. He even quoted Hosea, you know. He said, I want steadfast love and not sacrifice, he told the Pharisees. He told the woman at the well at Samaria, she asked him, where should I worship God? Should I worship in the temple in Jerusalem or the temple that we have in Samaria? He said, God, the Father, wants worshipers who worship in spirit and in truth. That is, they want a worship that comes straight from the heart, that comes from love and obedience. That's what they want. That's what God wants. He doesn't want these sacrifices unless they're there because they're tokens, they're signs of what you really think inside. And so he told the story of the scribes and the, the Pharisee and the publican. The story, what is a prayer straight from the heart? Prayer straight from the heart. And Jesus didn't just tell them that, he did it. He stopped all these sacrifices. There's only going to be one sacrifice now, and that's going to be the same as what sacrifice is a sign of. It's love and obedience. I'm going to live my life in complete love and obedience to my Father. I'm going to give him a life. That's what sacrifice is all about. I'm going to give him my life, and I'm going to do everything. I'm going to please him by living a life that is pleasing to him. His life is in, my life is in his hands, and I'm going to give it back to him. He gave it to me, I'm going to give it back to him. You know, our Lord gave it as a gift. His life is a gift to his Father. But he just didn't give it as a gift to his Father. He gave it as a gift to us. Because he said on that last night before he died, here's my body given for you. Here's my blood poured out for you. It's a gift to us. 
And that's what we celebrate in the Eucharist. God's gift to us, the true sacrifice, God's gift of self to us. And so when we have this, you know, the priest at Mass, the priest on behalf of everybody, of all of us, reminds God, he says the words that Jesus said at that Last Supper, this is my body, he says this is my blood. He uses those words. But he's not just reminding us, he's doing it because God said, do this in a memory, Jesus said, do this in memory of me. But it's in a prayer. It's in a prayer to the Father. And so the first one that is being reminded is God, that Jesus did it for us. So it's our sacrifice. We have the privilege. God doesn't need to be reminded of it. Jesus is right there. But we have the privilege in each generation to remind God that he did it for us. And when we come and receive communion, we receive that sacrifice. Whether the communion is spiritual or whether it's right here, we do it together. It's to receive that gift. And the gift then becomes ours in a new way because it's the gift of our love. It's the gift of our obedience. It's the gift of our lives in union with Christ to the loving God who made us. Let's take a moment now to mention those intentions for which we wish to pray at the Eucharist. Let us pray first of all for the church throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for all the peoples of the earth, for peace and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for this community, the community joined with us through television, for all the intentions they have sent in to us, asking us to pray. As a community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Most merciful and generous God, hear these prayers and answer them in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. My brothers and sisters, please pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, by whose grace it comes to pass that we may approach your mysteries with minds made pure, grant, we pray, that in reverently handing them on, we may offer you fitting homage through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For through bodily fasting you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue 
and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I only say the word. Let us pray. May we truly revere, O merciful God, these holy gifts by which you ceaselessly nourish us. And may we always partake of them with abundant faith in our heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks. Our thanks to our three donors for the gift of this Mass. On behalf of Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Fitzpatrick, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and all of us here at Daily Mass, our best wishes for a restful weekend, and we'll be looking for you all again come Monday. Prayer.